Say you've got an ordinary video and you want to spruce it up a little bit. Why not make it look like a painting? Sounds good, right? If you have Paint Shop Pro uh, 2021 or 2022, then I'll show you how you can do it easily. As you can see, this is an effect I used with some of my drone footage um, running it through a filter on Paint Shop Pro. And it turned out into something very stunning looking. If you want to see the full video, then uh, I have, I'll leave a link in the description for you. You can watch it there with some really nice copyrighted music, which I'm not going to play now because I don't want this being demonetized. So anyway, let's just roll right into how the hell I did this. Uh, first of all, you're going to need Paint Shop Pro, like I mentioned, uh, because this all hinges on that. <clears throat> Previous versions of Paint Shop Pro had a plugin called Pick to Painting, which looked something like this, and it allow you, allowed you to um, apply some really cool, you know, painting effects to your pictures. And I watched a video on from a uh, another YouTuber called Make Shop Pro who showed this way of, you know, using this filter to, or this plugin to make some really cool animations. The problem with it was that this window here is a plugin and it's almost like a application onto itself. Therefore, the macros built into Paint Shop Pro have no way of interacting directly with this. And so he had to, sh he showed this, you know, clever but very janky way of adding yet another macro program that kind of works with the macro program in Paint Shop Pro and they hand off back and forth to each other and it really never really worked really well. But, unfortunate, but fortunately with Paint Shop Pro 2021 and now with 2022, we have this functionality built into it. So to find it, you're going to go to palettes and you're going, to, you're going to want to do the Instant Effects palette. So the Instant Effects has, you know, all these lovely, you know, video effects you can apply or, you know, film effects and things like that. All kinds of things like that. But what we're interested in is the AI powered effects. And they probably look very familiar to you because they are essentially that pick to painting plugin brought in. <clears throat> And you can see there's all kinds of really snappy looking effects you can do with this plugin, or I should say with this feature now. But the key is here, this is only for still images. So how do we process video with this? Because as we know, you know, Paint Shop Pro really doesn't process videos. The key to it is to break your video down into an image sequence. And then we're going to set up a macro that's going to, you know, process all the images in that sequence for us. And then we can glue it back together again as a video. And there we go. So how do we go about the, doing that? Well, first of all, if you're rendering or something like that, <clears throat> uh, some kind of animation, then just render to an image sequence. And if you're producing a video, most um, you know Im video editing software will output to an image sequence. So you're going to want to do that. If you have no none of those choices, um, I'll leave a link in the description to a software called Virtual Dub, which will let you do it. So you would just go to, you know, we just open a video file, and then you could go export and you can export out as an image sequence. So that's simple enough. And this will also do the reverse and stitch it back together again. So you can, you can go to file and then um, open video file and you can pick the first image in your image sequence and uh, it knows, it sees that they're numbered and it will automatically you know, bring them all in as frames and then you can just do save um, video and save it back out as a video. So it's really, uh, really easy. It's free software. I'll leave a link in the description for you in case you're, you're desperate. So now that you've had your, you've broken down your 
video into a bunch of uh, images like this, right? Big image sequence. Um, how do we process those? The first thing you're going to do is just drag and drop um, one of the images into PaintShop Pro just to get a feel for what settings you want to use and everything. Um, so I think for this one, I'm probably going to use depth by design. And you'll notice the if you have 2021, you're only going to have this strength, which just is a mix between your original and the painted version. Uh, if you have 2020, uh, if you have 2022, you have this extra little dials here. One is color match, so you notice this style has these funky colors to it. But if you wanted to use more of the original palette, you can slide this over. And now it's more of the original palette. And smoothing image is just smoothing image. It's just as it sounds. So let's see what this looks like. Of course, I picked, you know, the worst um, example to use because it has just a plain background and this process doesn't really work very well with that. But, you know, that's the way we roll here on Zero Calvin. We're a quality organization. Um, but, eh, it's good enough for me. I think I'm going to do this, see what happens. I think it'll look interesting one way or the other. So that's fine with me. So I like these settings. So how do we go about processing it? Um, it's a twofold thing. First of all, we have to create a macro, which will take your current image and process it. So that will really just be as simple as me starting the macro, clicking on this, and then stopping the macro. So let's just do that. So we're going to go to File. Uh, and when I say macro, I guess I mean script. I guess that's what it's called now. So script, um, start recording. Now we just do this. Okay, that's it. Now file, <laughs> go back to script and we say save recording. Okay, we're gonna save it as, you know, something we can find. So I'm gonna do exclamation point, uh, cool thing, save it. Okay, great. Now we can close our image. We don't really need that. We don't want to save it. Uh, so that really that's it. We've created our little macro. So now we need to do a batch process using that macro and just point it at our directory here where we have all of our image sequence stuff. So let's do that. So <clears throat> we do file batch process. Okay. By default, it comes up with this one annoying image. I don't know why. So you want to get rid of that. Um, then you can click add, or if you want, I think you can just drag and drop. So I'm going to select all these and can I drag and drop? No, make a liar to me. I guess you can't. So I'm going to click on add. So once you've navigated to the directory, you can just choose select all and it will seem like nothing happened. It's not giving you any status whatsoever, but just be patient and eventually Give it a minute or two, depending on how many you have, and eventually your images will pop up here. Want to say hi, Roberta? Okay, our image is finally loaded. That took mm, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, something like that. But that was only 450 images. It could take quite some time if you have a long video. So I'm clicking Next. Now it's how we want to do this. What do we want to do? We want to run a script. So we click on script, and since I started mine with an exclamation point, it's gonna, it stop, starts right at the top here. So we're gonna do choose cool thing script, leave silent mode on, click apply. So that's it. With these photos, we wanna run our cool thing script. Click on next. Wanna give it a destination. We give it a destination using the Windows 3.1 browser window, of it, apparently. And then there's lots of different choices if you want to rename your file with certain f 
file naming conventions and so on and so forth. I'm just going to use the original name. I'm going to skip if file exists. I want to do as a PNG. I'll leave all this stuff alone and I click start. And that's it. It'll sit there and load one file at a time, apply the who jigger to it and keep going. And you see it's going pretty fast. And if I bounce over to my desktop, which is where I saved this at, look up cool thing and zip it on over here. You see that uh, it's zooming away, creating our frames. So once it's done processing, then you would just take all these frames, stitch them back together again, again using whatever software you have, uh, Virtual Dub works for that. And now you've created a masterpiece. So that's it. It really is that easy to do this in PaintShop Pro nowadays. So I encourage you to give it a try. Uh, I guess that's really all I have to show you for now. So. I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Cheers.